Hello everyone, welcome to MechWarrior Online. I am your host MechWarrior for today, Ivanius, and in this episode we are going to be exploring the wonders of Caustic Valley. Now we are not going to be spending time talking about Caustic Valley and all of its obvious terrain features and stuff in the way you might expect of an overview of a map. No, instead what we are going to be doing, because Caustic Valley is an old map, having been around since uh, most of the days of the betas and such, throughout open beta for sure. We are going to be discussing and dissecting the tactics to use on this map, uh, strategies, ways to move and utilize the terrain to create an advantage for yourself and win games. Uh, we are going to be focusing mostly on the public queue and how you're able to exploit maneuvers and tendencies of players there towards your advantage to win and you know, just be more successful in general. So starting off, as we know, over here is where the base is. Uh, in Assault Match, the base spawns here. There are lots and lots of turrets around for this side of the map. The other team obviously spawns on their side. And Caustic Valley is of course dominated by that central caldera. The problem with Assault and with most of the tactics I will be discussing here is that because of the turrets and where they are placed, being in this B3 corner for the most part, they cut off all avenues of maneuver throughout the C2, C3, into, a little bit into D2, uh, into most of D3, and all of the C4, B4 area. Basically it's all denied by the turrets. You can't fight there from the other, if you're spawned on the other side, without getting shot to pieces by all these turrets. So it negates a lot of these strategies and movement that I'm going to be talking about just because of that. Now in the other two game modes, Skirmish and Conquest, completely different story. The map is open and really one of the reasons that Caustic Valley has always been one of my favorite maps and has remained one of my favorite maps is because the terrain was well designed. There is movement, there are options, you have places to maneuver, you have different areas to attack from. So we're going to start breaking that down. Alright, so to start with, uh, we are going to talk about uh, the four avenues of attack, the ways to exploit the major terrain features on here. And we're going to begin by assuming a skirmish scenario. So let's say you spawned over here, because this is where we spawned for the testing grounds. One of these first tactics you have is to attempt the two-line rush. Now the two-line rush is not going to be as effective as it was in days of yore, and that is because the entire team does not spawn here. You have one lance of the team all the way over there in D5. Well, in days of yore, or if you decide, we're going to rush with just one lance, here's what happens. You come down here, the, the two-line, and personally, if I'm in a faster mech, preferably one that has a little bit of firepower, I will go the two-line. And I will go here because there is an enemy lance that spawns right over there in Echo 2. And I will be looking for a straggler, somebody who is a little slow to the keyboard, uh, somebody that I could potentially chop the leg off of or kill outright, uh, or at least just get some scouting done if I'm in something light like a locust here, which we're using so we can traverse the map in a quick and effective manner. But let's say, okay, you go past there. Well, you move down further along and you arrive over in this rocky formation. Now what you're stuck with is you can try to push out and you've got a little bit of cover for a while. You're able to get all the way into Echo 3 utilizing your cover. You've got your rocks and then you hit here in Echo 3. You got the hill to your right. You can go that way. You've got the D3 rock formation, that arm of the Caldera Hill over there to the left. But in between you've got this long empty area and out before you lies basically the entire valley area. Now that little ridge line there protects you from the D4 section where most of the enemies are going to be, but really you're just exposed. It's open. You've got no cover. Uh, the D5 hill over there is going to dominate its position, and when we get over there later on I'll show you just how good the view is from there for dominating a push from this side. Uh, and because you came two lines instead of three line, they're able to, you have to cover more ground. Yes, you got a little bit of cover, but you basically you get up to here, and it's, oh, cover open ground to end up where I'd be on a three-line push anyway, or go this way into Fox 3. And, you know, okay, I go into Fox 3, oh no, now I, I run into the same situation over here. Sure, I could try to go a little bit higher, I can try to push this way. Uh, and maybe it's a skirmish or a conquest map, yeah, that can be acceptable, that can work out a little bit. 
but you're you're now separated by all this empty space. They can see you coming from miles. Uh, your really only option out here is either have a long range weapon and do some poking, throw artillery and airstrikes, or just be a scout. Maybe uh, you can bring the team over here on an assault match and you can try to cap the base and do all this. Maybe that will work. But most likely, they're going to find out, hey, that's what they're doing. They're over here, they're in D4. As soon as you start shooting the turrets, which are spaced throughout this hill, and mostly down around in this little valley here, uh, that alerts them. They turn around, they come back, and they're going to smite you mightily. On the other hand, in the assault match, you do have the entire team there, so it is an option. An option. But really, you give up the much more favorable spawn location you have, where you have base turrets anchoring an entire flank for you just to make an attack. It's really not very effective. Um, the only element it gives you is an element of surprise and that's about it. Uh, from the other side you run into many of the similar of the same problems. So you come this way, uh, you had one lance that spawned way far out in front if you're in skirmish, you gotta wait for other guys to close the distance and get back over here which can take a long time, especially if it was the assault lance that spawned in the quote wrong spot. And then you hit here and you've just got this wide open expanse where you're completely exposed. Yeah, you got the trees for a little bit of visual cover, but that's not a lot. And the sensors go right through it. And then you basically just got this hill. You can't go behind that one because it's the edge of the map. So you're stuck here. Uh, on assault match, of course, those turrets are tearing you apart. The whole team has come this way. If they were had folded further out towards D4, D5, they they come back across here. They're attacking in a very advantageous direction, coming across the sea line, and basically you just get yourself caught in a terrible predicament. The only use for the two line these days is basically for lights to do some quick flanking, poke with weapons, and more importantly, do some serious scouting. And that's about it. But what about the three line? Because that's our next avenue of attack since we're going from right to left on the map relative to where I spawned facing. Uh, well, you go the three line, and here's what you get. You've got this long expanse that basically you've got to hope they're not watching, uh, or at least cover yourself with some long-range firepower. Gauss rifles, PPCs, ER PPCs, large lasers of multiple flavors, and the clan extended range medium lasers, to a lesser extent. But then you get here, and as we talked about earlier, you're in a bit of a pickle because you don't have a lot of room to work with and there's not a lot of cover. Uh, you can get all the way up to about here. Uh, often there are going to be a couple mechs that will come and contest this area, but once you start poking around this edge here, you expose yourself to that entire hillside. And now we need to talk about one of the fundamental tenets of Mech Warrior, and that is basically a, that, like in tank combat, because mechs are basically just walking tanks, the rule is superior firepower. You get superior firepower by having superior mechs able to target a given position. If they have a good firing line, like that's actually not too bad. Between the catapult and the atlas, they've got mechs spread out between there. You stepped out here, you took four steps basically, and you've exposed yourself to half a dozen or more mechs, and you've brought the firepower of one. It's a losing proposition. You can't play that poke game and expect to win. And it's the same problem with cresting the hill. You expose yourself to this whole area. Um, anywhere that you try it, really. This is the only area right up here, close to the caldera, that you have any cover at all. And really, at this point, you've got them anchored there. Your best option now is to redeploy up into the caldera and just go right through the middle here and drop on top of them. Now, you can drop on top of them right over here in D4 and try to cut a few of them off, but most likely you didn't bring your whole team and they're still facing this way. Or you can try to completely outflank, get all the way over here, and here's where you really have them cut off a little bit, because most likely they've had a few mechs push this way, but you're going to be taking fire from the caldera. They know you're over there, guys will redeploy. It's a, a bit of a mess. It can work, and certainly it, it does have the advantage of being a different option, but it's going to be a little bit tricky to pull off, especially if that D5 hill is occupied. Now, let's say that instead of going the 3 line, you decide you really, really, really wanted to blitz them, 
and you manage to get your team together, and I have done this in the past successfully, and you say, we are going to rush through the middle. Now, the important thing about this is that it has to be a concerted push, and you have to go all the way through. You cannot stop. And that's where it runs into issues with the public solo queue, is people aren't willing to be very trusting and to actually push. You're going to have to lead it. If you're saying, if you're the one calling for this maneuver, you have to be the first mech over, because otherwise they're not going to do it. Maybe you got lucky and got one guy in who is willing to take that responsibility to be the first mech over, because he's driving an atlas, but probably not. And the reason you have to get over there is, as we all know, standing in the caldera has a greater inherent heat. You're less able to cool yourself. I'm standing here, I've got 17% heat because I'm standing in the caldera. Moving at full throttle, I'm at 21%. As you can imagine, it's going to cool down a lot slower too if it's already up to there. If I'm outside the caldera, just right over here, it rapidly drops down to a mere 6%. 6% instead of 17, that's an 11% difference. It's a big one. And so if you get stuck inside the caldera fighting, and they are outside the caldera, you're going to wind up with a slight issue in that you're, you'll be able to withstand it for a little while, but you'll rapidly have your mechs heat up a bit more than theirs, and then you're going to find yourself spending a lot more time cooling down between shots or shut down and overheated while they're able to pour fire into your battle mechs with impunity. It's rarely the best option to fight from up here. The one good thing is, if you can get up here and they're not contesting this ridge line itself, up on the ridge line, in some places, not right here specifically, you are able to get a decent angle. You just do need to have mechs that can actually aim their torso is pretty far down so they can get the majority of their guns to bear, or to have a lot of weapons on their arms. And of course, so there are other areas where you're able to take a f just an extra step or two forward, and you lose that heat penalty. Alright, on to the next avenue attack. Avenue of attack. And that avenue of attack attack is the one that is primarily used in the pugging world of today. The primary strategy here is one that says, we shall go to the corner. D4, D5 is the corner. And from this side of the map, they will cluster up everybody all together. We, we fill up this whole area. We got a few back there. We got a couple there. Got a couple standing down here. We got guys right where the locust is standing. And we're going to shuffle forward. And we, oh, look, a mech. And then we shoot and we take shots. Oh, no. And then we back off. And there are UAVs everywhere. And there's artillery and airstrikes. And it's terrible. Uh, don't play the poke game. Nobody loses. Nobody wins in the poke game. You always lose. Uh, there are very few exceptions to that. And even if you've got a very poke-capable mech, it's just not a good proposition. Because as we said earlier, it's a game of superior firepower. And if you are stepping forward, you are exposing yourself to superior firepower. If they are coming to you, then you are able to set up superior firepower to greet them. Now that is why the typical strategy is that you got a couple guys engaging in the poke game mostly because they're impatient, they're aggressive, they feel they can do it, whatever reasons. But then you've got other people hanging back and they're waiting for the other team to poke forward and they're whacking them on the nose. And if that proceeds without interruption, eventually one team will get a few kills ahead and the other team will either get desperate and back off or get desperate and attack. And that is when they will lose. If they back off, they surrender this whole hillside, and then the other team is finally able to advance. There's bound to be some UAVs and or seismic sensors. Some people will start advancing. They won't be taking fire. The other guys will see that. They'll come up too. Then they've got command of this area. They're able to step back very to easily regain cover, step forward again. And when you have a lot of mechs on, there, on the line, then the poke game works. But it doesn't work when it's just one or two poking around a corner that's very exposed the way that that particular little lump of hill is. Now a far better option, if you are going to be aggressive about this, is to swing a bit further out into D5. We'll cover that in just a second though, because there's always going to be a couple people that do D5 from both sides, that swing out wider this way, because they want to try the poke game from over here. They say, this is a little bit better angle, They're not in the, there aren't as many people looking at me, I can do this, I'm able to 
not expose myself to the entire hillside in one shot because I'm able to keep this behind between me. This is not a bad option. It's actually a decent place to poke from because it does keep you sheltered from that hillside more effectively. You're able to expose less of yourself, control the, how much you're exposing yourself to that area where the primary cluster is. But you can have this play into your hands. You can set up a very effective firing line right over here with about half a dozen mechs. And when they start coming over that hill, when they start poking around, when they start prowling into this area, you greet them with overwhelming firepower. And you've basically shifted the firing execution line from being over in C4, C5 to being all the way in C5 on the left and just cut off their options for maneuver. Now, this does eventually have to be followed up with some advance of your own. And from this side, poking the D5 hill is a bad option. It's very good coming this way not so much this way. And that's because you've got cover, 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 oh, exposed. You don't really have many options for controlling how much you're exposed, particularly in a taller mech. The taller mechs, they basically have to stand further back, and if they got low slung arms, they really have to come a long way forward with the tops of their mechs exposed to be able to get some fire off. The D5 channel is not a good area. So a better option, instead of exposing yourself there, is just go full speed and walk across here. Put some fire in while you're going, but don't stop and try to back up. That just slows you down, makes you an easy target, leaves them with more time to fire at you. You just go right past and go around the hill. Now, if you have a mech that is conducive to attacking from the hill, a Jaeger mech with lots of ballistic firepower, uh, something with Gauss rifles, PPCs, maybe even an LRM boat, then you might want to come, come climb onto the hill and try to dominate this area. Now, this hill is very good. It is an amazing hill. It dominates the entire right-hand side of the battlefield if it's got the appropriate mech with a, a loadout able, capable of doing that uh, perched upon it. From here, you've got this wonderful rock giving you the same kind of cover advantage you get from that little lump of hill if you're attacking this way. You can see into there, you can ex choose how much you're exposing yourself. It's only a step back to be completely covered. A little bit more for a taller mech than the locust. As you can see, the Locust is a little short fellow, but it's still a very nice outline. The only thing it doesn't do very well is block LRMs, but it blocks line of sight. You just take a couple extra steps back, LRMs go right by you. Able to fight quite effectively, and when they come this way, you're able to fight effectively there. So it controls this entire side if you've got some mechs that know what they're doing, have appropriate loadouts. From this side, as we talked about earlier, Look at the domination of that three line. Again, this rock here. You're able to expose yourself very nicely, and it works for covering that whole three line. It works for attacking that area where the team likes to cluster that spawns on this side in a skirmish match. It is just effective. The only thing is, you do have to have high firepower up here. You gotta have a bunch of LRMs. Uh, like, I, I've, I've taken catapults with a couple LRM-20s up here and been very effective with them. I've been very effective with assault can with, with auto cannons. I've been effective with Gauss. Uh, not so much of a PPC fan, personally, but PPCs are also very good from up here. But then, you have another option. What about those brawlers? What if you don't like exposing yourself? You really don't like that poke game at all? Well, have no fear. Now is when maneuver comes in, and establishing that wonderful superior firepower and multiple angles of attack and all that stuff. You simply come further down here. Because once you have moved into the D5 area and they see that and they have noticed, and you've got guys to go up on the hill, start to trade some fire and stuff, you will have mechs that come down here and they're going to attack down low. You come out and meet them head on. Ideally, you're going to need something really quick to be able to get in and get out, or you're going to need backup. That's pretty much the only ways you're going to be able to do this very effectively. But you're going to come out, meet them head on, blunt their attack, and hopefully push them back. If you're really quick, you might even just bypass it entirely and get yourself situated down into the water here and use this mountain to cover yourself. Then you've got people that have pushed around, maybe someone on the hill, maybe they're around there, maybe none one on the hill at all. You never know but you're able to get converging fields of fire if they push through this little channel here. If they don't push through that channel there, well, those guys can go down and they can shoot through the channel, and you can come around over here, and you can fire this way. And look at this terrain feature. Look at the way that that curve is. 
you got the same kind of wonderful, advantageous pushing mechanism that you have in those two other slots we talked about. You're able to easily expose yourself, able to control how much you're exposed, fire one step back and you're in cover. Very, very handy. And then you've got angle of attack there, angle of attack right here. You've got the angle of attack from the hill and just below the hill. You're hitting them from at least four places. If you've got somebody in that channel over there behind the catapult, that's five different angles and it's almost 200 degrees that you're attacking from. And remember, they saw you coming this way. They started pushing over this way. You know, at least a few mechs, they probably tried to go this way, and then they took some fire, they got pelted, they decided to get out of there, they got back over here, they said, oh, we'll, we'll fight from here, we'll, we'll poke game then, we'll poke game that way. Now they're taking fire from over there, and they're trapped. They're in this little bowl down here, they've got no cover to speak of from every angle, because there's mechs in so many locations, they're always going to be taking shots from somewhere. They can only cover themselves from maybe one angle at a time, and they die. That is the ultimate goal there. And if they decide that they're going to run for it, remember that commanding view from up on the hill? Look at this. There's no cover anywhere. Hey, I got mechs down there. I can't run to E5 and try to take cover. Or... You know, if they are trying to run E5, that's a great time to abandon the hill or that little channel there and come around and meet them. They've got to run all this distance, or they got to go into the caldera. There's really only two options to escape. It's run over the open ground and expose your back, try to walk backwards and stay exposed a long time, or run up into the caldera, try to reposition. But at that point, you've damaged, you've probably taken some casualties, it's not going to go well. The numbers are in the other team's favor for these guys. So that is the ultimate goal of pushing that particular side there, and one of the best ways to do it. On the other hand, what about attacking from this side? Well, we've covered the two line already. The three line works very much the same way as it did before. We don't really need to rehash that. Um, it's got basically all the same problems, plus the problems that we've talked about for assault mode. Well, you've also got the Caldera Rush. That works very much the same way. However, I do like pushing the Caldera from this side just a little bit more. Uh, unfortunately, the one problem with the Caldera push from here is because of the way that the teams cluster, you're going to have a lot of mechs that are dominating this firing channel and able to easily reposition to dominate this firing channel. In previous editions of the game, or in assault mode, where they all spawn over in Charlie 3, they tend to come and cluster up around this area. And when they're clustered around here, because of the way that this section works, not many mechs can expose themselves. It's a little bit narrow, and because of the pipe work and stuff, there's a few terrain geometry things that make it a little bit difficult to get a slower mech up here, and more importantly, get a slower mech away. So they're only really going to be exposing one or two mechs. You're able to get that superior fire. Yes, you're taking extra heat and stuff, but all you need to do is push them back a little bit and push your cells forward because you're able to take cover very effectively off these crater lips. And if you're fighting them down in C3, you can easily dominate them. So that's my preferred attack method for an assault game match because in addition to that, these, these wonderful little walls here, they give you cover from those turrets. The turrets aren't really going to be interfering much at all when you're fighting here. I think there are one or two of the, of the missile turrets that will activate and shoot at you, but it's a minor annoyance for the most part, and as long as you're able to keep the enemy mechs from keeping you targeted for long, those mech, those turrets aren't going to be firing very much. Uh, just You have to be very careful about UAVs, because if the UAV stays up, those turrets will start pounding you with the LRMs, and it will become a problem. But what about you know the usual cluster point? Well, we've already covered most of the problems with the poke game. Uh, you've got the same exact problems here. Because they're spread out and all over the place, you're poking around here is just a losing proposition. You don't want to do it. You can't really go up that channel there. That's what they're waiting for, is that channel right there in the D4, D5. Now, you can attack from the hill. That is very, very helpful. Uh, you can walk around this way. I remember there was a lance that spawned over in Delta 5 if it was a skirmish match. So, yeah, sure, let's go ahead. We, we loop around here. I like to do this with a faster mech, personally. Uh, just check, see if any mechs did come down this way. If they don't have a strong push and you can 
and you feel that your mech is capable of fighting them, and you're able to pull it off if you got some backup, yeah, take them, roll them up, push them back through here. This D5 area is going to be the key to the battlefield. And then we've already talked about how great this little corner is to poke from, but there's something else you can do from right here. You can take even a heavy mech. I've even done an Atlas moving only 6D, although it was a little bit too slow for my liking. But you accelerate yourself up. Here we're at 66. We'll, we'll put it up to 70 for a slightly faster mech. You don't expose yourself too much. You got a little bit of cover. You're opening fire, returning fire. And just like in that channel, you keep moving and you get to the refinery building right here. Look at this. You are completely covered from that side of the hill. You are gone from the sensors. They can't see you, they can't hit you, you've opened up all this ground to move on. You can go up this way, get a firing position over here on this RD5 channel, start looking at the hill there. You can just walk right across if you want to, open yourself up a little bit more, open them up to your fire. You can go around the hill a bit longer if you like. You're able to move all the way down here, you've got all this cover. You might even have an enemy mech that came down this way. Uh, it's probably going to be a solo if you did that you can try to fight and take out. If you got a friend, definitely fight and take out. And then you're able to push out over here. You've got them completely outflanked. Now they're taking fire from the pokers over there. You start putting fire here. Hey, they saw you go by because you were exposed that whole time. They started panicking. Most of the time I find that the enemy team either starts taking fire from here, especially if you brought an LRM launcher or something, and they start rolling up and they go towards Charlie 3. This opens it up for your team to come pouring over that hill and then they start attacking through the Charlie line. And this map is very, very favorable for a team that is attacking counterclockwise around this <laughs> caldera. The only area that really runs into trouble is over in the Echo 3 side where it becomes a little bit difficult, but right there you just take a shortcut through the caldera, drop on them, but when you come around here, you actually get onto the Charlie line. Look at this. You got another one of these great little hills. But even better, look at all those hills and little cover down there. You can keep yourself very well covered from the inside of the caldera, most of the terrain features out there. If they're out in Charlie 3, you see that ridge line there? Hey, that covers most of them. They have to come and crest that ridge line, open themselves up to all of your mechs that have come over here. Uh, you can spread out all the way down here. You've got room to maneuver and you can push. You get a good firing line set up. You come out to over here and then you run into a little bit of trouble. All right, maybe they're in the caldera, maybe not. But uh, basically, if you come up high, you're gonna expose yourself. You're cresting a hill, bad move, don't do it. Uh, if they're not down there, okay, this kind of works. You got a, a semi-decent corner, but really it exposes you a little bit too much because you it's just, only two steps. It's just tough and it opens up that whole area. If they're not holding here, if they're not willing to fight and contest it, okay, fine, cool, you got them. But if they are, you're playing the poke game again. But better still, if you come a little bit lower, look at how this one works. You got all this, op all this room, you got low ground that you're tucked into, and then look at that. I like the shape of these hills. I like a very steep outline there because that's what's going to give you the option to poke around very low and expose yourself to very little. This is where you're going to clean them out of the C3 area, the down low, to open up the guys that are up there ready to poke. You fight from down here. You can fit multiple mechs down low all the way through here, able to poke this way. You use the pipeline as cover. You just keep moving, keep sticking, keep bleeding. Fire, 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 push, 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 shove them down that way, make them run, get them in front of you, roll them up, come over the hillside, force them to go that way, now they're stuck, oh no, it's a huge open swath of ground again, blast them in the back, force them to run for E3, duck into E4, ah, they're going that way, quick, up, up the hill, let's hop into the caldera, we're going to take a shortcut, we're going to drop on them right over here through this little entrance. BAM! Right in the middle of your mission again. It's devastating when you can do a proper counterclockwise circling of this hill. You can just keep murdering them. And that's where we get into the conquest tactics that I prefer. In conquest, you have a capture point here. Currently, it is called Kappa. At one point, it was called Theta. You have a, comp a capture point over that way. Currently, I believe it is called Gamma. I think. No, Gamma's over there. Uh, that one would be Epsilon. 
Uh, then you've got Sigma and Theta out there on those sides. Those two are largely irrelevant, particularly the cap point over there by the lake, because you've got all this open ground that you have to cover to get back to the fight. I really don't like sending mechs towards that direction if I can help it. Uh, I will send them from this side because we're going to be pushing our way over to D5, so they're able to go out there and then cut through the lake and come back into the fight, so it works out well with a fast mech. But with this map, you have lances spawning there, lances spawning there, lances spawning there from that side. On the other side, over where the their wonderful little collector is, uh, which is based in the back area of Charlie 5, almost Delta 5, you have a lance spawning down there, you got a lance spawning a little bit further up, you got a lance spawning a bit further down. From both sides, it is the same strategy. You want to keep the caldera on your left and circle counterclockwise. You want to fight for the center line. That point, the kappa point, and the point that your enemy is on. It goes right through the middle of the terrain of the major terrain features that cut the map in half. You control those terrain features, you control the two halves of the map from up there on the center line, you go back and forth on there, you murder all the enemy mechs that you run into, and you dominate the match. The one thing to remember is, you want to put one or two mechs inside of the caldera to cap the point, and then get them out of there. Don't stand in there to contest it. You want to be contesting it from either out here, over on the C4 side, from C3, you've got mechs on the outside shooting in when they try to go in and cap it. And if you're on this other side pushing from that direction, then what you got what you want is you want mechs contesting from over here in Delta 4. Maybe some mechs poking in Delta 3. Don't really like the Delta 3 poke as much, because you want to be, as I said, circling counterclockwise. You want to be pushing forward. So you got guys taking pot shots from areas like this. You got little firing areas from just outside. We're able to dominate the inside of that crater. You got You've got to get that cap point con controlled as fast as possible, kill the guys that go in for it, but then with a lot of your forces, you're pushing forward and you're doing those same tactics you've, tactics you've already covered to attack around through the D5 area. Use that hill, dominate, push, come through here, attack the cap point. You've got some extra cover because of that cap point that spawns right over here. You can hide behind the collector, attack around here, get them outflanked, push them, push them, push them, roll them up, chase them around the caldera, cap the, if you spawned over there, you cap this point as you come through, oh great, you got three in a line, uh, you sent some light mechs off that way and capped it early, if you came from this side, you capped that early, you push this way, you cap their point, maybe you trade beginning points, that happens a lot, but you want to have an advantage in mechs killed, and then, oh, we, ca we capped your point and you we traded? Cool, we're coming right back through the middle and we're going to run over your guys as you try to cap Kappa. And that's the same from both sides, it's how you dominate the conquest match. Well, that covers pretty much all of the theory crafting and everything. This is based off my own personal experience stuff, but you know, words are one thing. Let's put it in practice. So without any further ado, we are now going to continue on into some actual matches and see how this stuff works when it's actually applied. Alright, let's get to it. First match is going to be a skirmish match. I spawn on the lake side of the map. So we've got the lake, uh, we get rid of the push D5 easily. Uh, I'm playing a Thunderbolt 5S for both of these. As you can see, I've got one large laser, so I don't have a lot of very long range firepower. I've got an LRM-15, so I can, I can poke respectively at a distance, but I do have to keep them in sight and take fire return. And I got three medium lasers, two machine guns, and an SRM-6. So I'm really built a bit more for brawling, but I like to soften them up first with that large laser and the LRM-15, then get in close and finish it with the SRM, the mediums, the large laser still, and the machine guns. So, having spawned out in the Fox 3 area, the first thing I'm going to do is head towards D5. Now, I am going to stay low as much as I can, so I'm going to hug the Echo 5 hill. Uh, here's my teammates, they're all going right up towards D4, and what you're going to see is that they start drifting over towards the D4, D5 corner very quickly here. They do first go up and they poke into the caldera and see if anybody's in there. Check for the rush there. Uh, fine. All well and good. So there we go, I've run into the first mech, it's a pretty baby, we're going to trade some shots, but I'm on the hill already, a little bit exposed more than I need to be, but I'm behind the hill, I'm out of the line of fire. fire. Didn't take too much damage, lost 5% of 
now the uh, the other mechs on my team have pushed forward, they've pushed the pretty baby back, and they're beginning to engage in that poke game. You see that big cluster over there? Looks like about seven, eight mechs hanging out D4, D5, spreading out just a little bit. Target I'm staying wide, I'm going New D5. I'm going to be putting pressure on these guys from all different angles, and allowing that blob of mechs to do what they do best. Alright, so it looks like I've got a few too many mechs in front of me to really comfortably push around there just yet. That Atlas is a little bit intimidating, he does have the large lasers. Uh, fortunately we get the first kill, that pretty baby exposed himself way too much. So what I'm going to do now is, because we've got a UAV up and some other things, I'm going to shoot down the enemy UAV, I'm going to lob missiles. I want to soften these guys up, try to get them to push backwards. I also noticed that, hey, that Atlas is hanging out way in the back over there. He's going to try to poke some fire at him. I like his position for a target. New target acquired. Also shooting at that awesome. People are throwing arties. So that's a good position to throw an artillery strike. But the ECM's kind of got him covered. New target acquired. With the enemy team having moved, I decide I'm going to go for it. I'm going to push this way, especially with that Atlas over there. I can really soften him up and do a number on him with my large laser and my LRMs and then finish him off especially because he's managed to isolate himself from his team. And because there's no real threat, because the enemy team is withdrawn to C3, I'm going to just go right over the top of the hill, get that Atlas in as a target as fast as I can, and just put some fire on him. Atlases are tough, so I want to soften him up as much as possible before having to actually engage him. That CT is looking really nice and tender. Down he goes. Destroyed. And I've got a Wolverine and one other guy that have followed me down here. They saw, hey, he's moving somewhere. Uh, he's not really taking Target fire, so I'll back and the Wolverine have joined me. And we've got some decent firepower to direct towards Charlie 3. And we've got that Timberwolf out in the open. Unfortunately, the laser didn't crest the hill. But we're going to put some shots into his back, make him hurt. Alright, the team is kind of split a little bit. We've got five mechs on the Charlie 4, and then we've got a few guys in Delta 4. The enemy team rolled through the three line after they started getting rolled up, uh, and they're fighting our teammates over there. The score is currently tied, so we're going to push hard and try to get a distinct advantage off of these mechs that are in Charlie 3. We're going to multiple angles, so they're going to get flattened. dead, he's still hanging on by a thread, and he should take a shot from somebody right Target there. Target destroyed. LRM ammo depleted. Alright, my Thunderbolt destroyed. is out of LRMs, so I'm going to be closing Target for brawling destroyed. now, which is pretty much perfect timing, because now is when I want to cut through the center. Alright, the Nova goes down. That gives us a 5-5 tie. Please stop playing NASCAR. Alright, now we have to push the three line, unfortunately. But the enemy team is not focused on defending it. They're trying to roll into the caldera and they're spread out across the other side of the map. They've even taken up the D4 poke positions that we occupied earlier. So I'm able to roll around here quite easily. I deployed that UAV specifically to get eyes on the enemy, see how many are actually hanging out here, to know if what I can do, what I can get away with. The Stormcrow has no situational awareness, his back's open. I drop right behind him, line it up and give him an alpha. And he walks straight backwards and dies. Destroy. New target acquired. All right, now we're gonna hop down in here. There's just a hunchback and the awesome's running away. So we're just gonna kill him. Level critical. Target destroyed. New target acquired. All right, that awesome looks a little bit critical. vulnerable, but it does look like his teammates have pushed around. We do have a three kill lead right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross the caldera to help out my teammates look for some more kills. That sword torso side torso so didn't work out so well, but then also did lose the side torso. Unfortunately, I'm shooting my buddy in the back here. I see the Jenner. Um, I don't like Jenners very much. They're a little bit annoying, but Jenners do have a nice big center torso, so I'll poke him there. I'll get the kill later, or somebody else will. Target acquired. So Kate is coming into Delta Three, so I'm gonna just cut the corner and try to get him, but he dies before he gets there. 
New target acquired. And now it's down to just the general. So we're just gonna close in and finish off the map. But superior maneuvering has carried the day. Twelve five and the five that died were the five that did not move and pushed with the team around the corner. They tried to hold in the Echo 4 area as they got rolled over by the team, and it failed. And of course, I finish up with a very respectable 2 kills, 9 assists, 553 damage, and the Battlemaster that came with us did even better. Now, the second match, this is going to be a Conquest match. We spawn on the Gamma side, so it's basically the same attack angles as the last match. Unfortunately, didn't get to spawn the other side. Uh, the one thing I did do is I took a voice command, unfortunately, because of these settings I had set up, it was the wrong push to talk key on Fraps at the time, so you don't hear me saying anything. But what I do do is I outline the entire strategy of basically take the center line, control the Gamma Epsilon Kappa center line, roll counterclockwise around the caldera, kill everything. Now what I'm going to do here, because I know that they've got some guys that spawn a little bit low, I want to poke wide around here and see what they've got hanging out. Echo 5, Echo 4. See if they've got any people trying to cut through the lake in that whole open area to see, to try to t contest the Sigma cap point. Now they do have a Timber Wolf who's got some PPCs, so I'm going to put fire on him, throw missiles. I want to do damage and get him out of there as fast as possible. If they're exposed and they're going to hang around, I'm just going to give them some shots. Put the three lasers and the three LC is running away, don't really care too much. I am going to back off though at that Goss shot. I don't like getting Gossed. Uh, it's an exposed position and that is a Goss jag. I'm not going to take him. So I'm just going to run for it and just hop into Kappa. Acquired. Oh, I do call acquired. out the fact that the Goss jag is out there so that we can get some more fire on him and start harassing him. The Goss jag appears to have turned around. Uh, I don't want to push that corner there. This mech is not built for the poke game at all. So I want to just back off and try to find a position to maneuver, get around, and throw missiles at him. Soften him up before I come after him. Sorry, Kilo's a dire wolf, so I'm going to throw missiles. LRMs are very effective against a dire wolf. I also call him out as a primary target because, hey, you want those guys dead. And the team does very good. They're actually pushing. The D4, D5 area right now, so I've got plenty of room to move. And my large laser gets taken off right there. So it removes some of my long range capability, but I'm still mostly capable, and certainly it helps out with heat management. Throw up the UAV to be helpful. I'm going to target that Wolverine, throw some LRMs, they don't go over the hill, unfortunately. Could have killed them otherwise. And now I'm going to go Delta 5. Taking a look at what they've got up there, what Artillery are they doing? Strike, I'm going to just back off, use that UAV, throw missiles at them. Do do a quick check to see what the kill count is at. Acquired. Just want to see if we've got numerical advantage. The Stormcrow, like I said, is pushing Epsilon, uh, well, or rather as I was ordering, so now I'm telling everyone, hey, push D5, D5, go around, uh, push Epsi, take it, cap it, do it. I spot that UAV there. UAVs must die. Target destroyed. I thought it had died for a second there. Four shots, a little bit too long to, be, to spend at it, but the UAV is down. Target acquired. Alright, I see Charlie's open center torso, so he's gonna get it. He's down. Target destroyed. We're doing a very effective fighting from here because we got some guys spotting. A short little Kit Fox is doing a good job. Uh, the enemy team is starting to get rolled up a little bit, but we are also down on the cap, so I've moved into Epsilon to get a superior firing angle and help cap the place. Because we need to catch up. Here's that Goss Jag, so I'm going to give him some special love with the LRMs. Only got two shots left, though. Now I'm going to be telling everyone to start pushing back towards Kappa. I'm going to tell them to stay, to push the sea line, keep it on their left, etc, etc. All that stuff. really want to get that Jag. Take a look. It uh, looks like we haven't lost any mechs, but they've lost about six. Uh, take command, tell everyone attacks Charlie 3, uh, because that's where I expect them to be clustered up for the most part, at least a couple. So we're going to just push in there. We've got the guys attacking from the sea line. They've got all that advantageous terrain helping them out. They're pushing very effectively, and the other team is falling back before them. The Atlas
just leads the way in here. I like that move by the Atlas. Uh, he does stop. Eh, what can you What can you do? Uh, there isn't any Atlas there, so you can't really hold it against him or anything. It's the kind of things we worry about when they're pre-made. Close in. He's lost his torso. Down goes the Atlas. Tell everyone to push around. I see that they've already gone all the way around, so I think I, at this point I told the light mech to go cap Gamma and told everyone else to push the caldera. We're going to take that shortcut, drop on top of them, kill the Nova, etc, etc. But in a second here I also want to start capping everything because currently they've got 4 to 1. I check, I see there's only 2 enemy mechs left, so we're going to split up the forces, take all the caps because they barely killed any of us, and just to win the game. We've dominated the match. Yeah, we haven't controlled the, the center line as effectively as we'd like to, perhaps. But we have killed them all, except for the last couple stragglers. The score hasn't gotten Target out of hand, acquired. and we've got it wrapped up right now. See, people aren't really acquired. going to cap the area as much, so I turn around to go do it myself. Lead by example and all that stuff. That's the theory, anyway. Practice, at least with me. Yeah, could use some work. That Stormcrow abandons Epsilon because he does see the last enemy mech somewhere out there. Our team is fanned out fairly effectively now. They're going to be getting all the caps. We got somebody on Sigma. We got guys heading towards Gamma. I've got Epsilon wrapped up there. And the enemy team score is only just approaching 600. Alright, Epsilon is well enough capped. I could move already, but I decided to take a, look, a second look at the map, see how things are progressing. We got three mechs closing on Gamma, so we've got this wrapped up. They're down to one cap point left, and it's about to be taken away. And Theta starts flashing red. We do have a, a Battlemaster over there, very close to Theta. So he's going to be turning around very quickly. And at this point in the match, because everyone's been doing amazing, the thing that I like to do when I'm in command is I like to praise the people and tell them they've done a great job, done excellent. And I will do that multiple times. Uh, and here I actually just type it out. And then I think better of it and decide it needs some enthusiasm. Exclamation mark. New target acquired. There's both of the enemy mechs. There's that very weak Raven right there, which I'm going to go for. I see he's coming my way. Take the SRMs. He gets shot in the back by the Battlemaster. Good kill by him. And their last remaining guy is that little spider. And we're going to try to run him down before we end up cap winning. We do have at least one mech jumping on top of Theta. Looks like two getting it. So their, their last chance at winning is slipping through their fingers right there. And I give them the GG. I try to be per polite. Um, GLHF and GG basically come from the fact that when I started out in playing online multiplayer games, it started with RTSs, and that was common courtesy was to start off the match and say GLHF. At the end, you say GG. That's the, the acknowledgement. I've lost. Good game. You won. Or I won. <laughs> Either case, you wait for you wait for the loser to say GG Target in the in, in the RTS. That's just proper parlance. Um, my personal preference of deleting the, the WP, the well played, is for Mech Warrior Online. I throw well played on if it was a very hard fought, close match, as as just an extra little token of respect for the fact that, you know, it was a very close even match. In this case, it wasn't that even. They did get to 600, but they needed 150 points more, and we had the place five capped at the end and killed every single mech. So just the standard measure of respect, the regular GG, and that's it. 
Anyway, that does it for this particular episode. Hopefully you see, you've seen something that has inspired you, given you some new ideas about what you can actually do on Caustic Valley, possibly start applying towards some other maps. I will try to cover some other maps as I'm able to get some more thoughts and probably dissect them. But it's probably going to take some time, and I'll be honest, I'm most able to do this with my favorite maps because I just can get a feel for them, and I like playing them, and I like talking about them. Anyway, good luck and have fun out there, mech warriors. Ivanius is out.